strategy, everyone. <laughs> okay, I don't have a, a thingy, a clicker. Thank you. Okay, um, so my name is Linda. I am co-founder of Machina Wearable Technology. How many of you, well, I'm sure that all of you have heard of Google Glass, Jawbone, Fuel Band, Pebble, anybody? Well, all of us are considered in between the rank of wearable technology. So that's what we're gonna talk about. And for those of you who don't know what wearable technology is, it's practically any technology device integrated into clothing. So who am I? And I'm just representing my team. Um, we're a wearable technology company located in Mexico City. Yes. And we've had a, a vision for over a year now to design machine-like clothing to create wearable machines. So how did this idea begin? Many people think that wearable technology is something new, that's the hype of today, but let me tell you that it's not. It's been existing since the 1980s. Who of you imagine that the idea of Google Glass came from the 1980s? Any of you? Well, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the first um, surface example of Google Glass in the 1980s. So it's something that is not new, but as you can see, it's something that it's bulky, it's not functional, and I don't know about you, but I wouldn't go to the movies or on a date with something like that. So that is how the idea of Machina was born. We wanted to create wearable technology that was fashionable, functionable, and adaptable. And of course, for all of you users, not only for celebrities or people with money. So we, we are a fashion brand. We have different kinds of products, but I'm here today to tell you about one of our products, and it's our most successful product today. It's a, mu it's a jacket that makes music through your body movements. But before I get into that crazy idea, let me tell you about the problem. Because people come up to me and say, how the hell did you think about that? So I was with my co-founders at a concert, and we paid over $60 to this gigantic music festival back home. And all we could see was this guy. We were like, what the hell? For all we know, he could be playing solitary and we wouldn't know about it. And I'm a kind of a um, music fan and I love going to concerts. So I've been like to Kiss, to Aerosmith, and you see these rockers dancing with ladies. And that's when I asked myself, where's the act of performance? So we're in a, in a moving in a fast pace on the digital age. This makes also music going on a fast pace in its industry. So now people make music through their computer. We wanted to change that. So what was the solution? Using their body as an interface and using our second skin, clothing. I don't see any of you, any of you naked. So <laughs> this is the first prototype of what would it looked like. And I like this picture very much because when I was taking it, which besides I'm not a very good photographer, so my co-founder ended up taking the picture, I was just staring at it and it was like, how are we gonna make even this possible? Because you have cables, you have sensors, you have a brain that needs to control everything that will be happening in the jacket. So the idea of how to transform this into a reality was a big challenge. So this is the first prototype. This is a little bit how it looked like. This is, we're talking about final year 2011, beginning of year 2012. And well, it's cool, handsome guy. <laughs> it, it, it attracted the public, but it was not functional. And I'll tell you why. Because when we launched our company, we had the sensors here to make music. And in a concert, because we asked the DJ to perform the jacket, he was just like so motivated. And everybody was like, what is he doing? <laughs> All I can see is this guy rubbing his stomach. What does that even mean? And we're talking about an event of 250 people launching Machina. I was freaked out. I was like, no, he's not rubbing his stomach. He's making music. <laughs> I don't understand. That's just a dude rubbing his stomach. So this was a big alert that we had to change. 
Okay, so after that, as you can see, it's a product that we've worked on a lot. Um, we have created, it's very important for you to know, we've created our own technology. So here I introduce to you Kerr, that it's the brain, and we named it Kerr, um, of our jacket of what it is today. To make Kerr possible, we launched on Kickstarter. We talked about, a lot about um, crowdfunding lately. Um, we successfully raised $77,000. And this um, gave us an opportunity to improve the technology, um, get better research done, and have better aesthetic of the jacket of, as well. This is what the jacket looks like now. It will, um, the technology has changed to the fullest. Uh, we will be launching in Japan by the beginning of next year because it has been a, a success after Kickstarter for the Japanese market in fashion and tech-wise. And, well, it's a pretty slick jacket. But <laughs> um, I would like to tell you also about some of the challenges and things that we had to go through to make this product a reality. And why is this important? Because we are living and being part of an industry that is being born right now. It's, n it's not fully developed just yet. And we're directing our products to a market that still doesn't exist. So it's harder to have a quick prototyping and testing process. This is very important because when you develop a software or an app, you just show it to the people from here to China, to India, to the States, wherever you want to, and if it has a bug, you fix it. And that's about it. It's not that expensive. So having hardware is difficult in a sense. But in another sense, prototyping quickly is possible with 3D printing. It, it's a cheap way and I think it's improving. I am hoping to see that in a future, maybe this is just a crazy dream, um, there will be more experimentation on products than just um, 3D. Um, with hardware and products like this, it is easier to pitch to investors Media is more excited because you're unique and not among 1.2 million apps, so you need to dare and do something amazing. Having prototypes resemble physically to a final product will give you more media exposure, even if it's rough, even if it doesn't work, because you must remember the event I went to. Rubbing this stomach. It worked. Local media is a huge buzz. Like, it gives you the credibility when people don't believe in you and when you want to get out there. And something that's very important for us that has also worked as a success as our brand is design. You must be very careful with everything you do and take care of aesthetics and not create products just because. We are fair believers of open source, free as in libre. It's one of our favorite quotes. Um, we will have the jackets and all of our products with uh, a free code so you can interact with it. And this, because we want to extend the functionality of the product. Where am I as a woman entrepreneur? That's me with long hair. Some people don't recognize me because my picture was with long hair, but, <laughs> well, my purpose is, because a lot of people say, what do you do there? Exactly. So it is very important to understand the human needs and how trends are moving today, not only in fashion and technology, but the ability to combine both. That is mostly what I do at Machina. So what does it take to, to be an explorer in the world that we're living in today? You need to explore with new materials. You have to dare and go into the unknown even if people don't believe it even possible because things might just happen. This, for example, is 3D printed soles. I don't know if I can swear <laughs> up here, but shit happens. You have to get over it and just keep on going on. You have to be everywhere. You just can't be local. We're in, living in a world in a digital age where you have to take advantages of those tools and make yourself present. And most important of all, enjoy the ride. <laughs> and the future isn't about mobile, it's about mobility. Thank you. <laughs> and just to wrap it up, I have some catalogs here with some of our products, just in case any of you guys want no to get into. No jackets yet, right? No. no jackets yet. <laughs> but you can see all about it here, any products you wish to see. We have time for a couple of questions. Does anybody oh, want to no. address Lydia? 
One question. The boss says one question. He needs the boss. Sorry. Why not? Hi. So I saw that you had the Kickstarter campaign and you raised 77 from 151 backers. Yes. And what were you offering in exchange? Because that's a pretty high average uh, amount for each backer. Yes. Um, we have different products because we're a fashion brand. This is just the most successful product. We have t-shirts, we have jeans, we have hoodies. And most of it, what we sold were workshops of do-it-yourself, of how to build a jacket. Um, we also got a lot of retailers interested. So we had two retailers in specific that bought like a complete batch of jackets um, for next year. Well, they're to be delivered by the end of this year. And those were like the biggest hits on Kickstarter. Yes? I'm sorry, just one question. Lydia, again, a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.